Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Week 26 version of Scouting for Goals, where I, Oscar, am utilizing the Scout Member Area tools to help me decide what my best plan of action is for the upcoming Game Week. And first let's look at how my team did last week and how it is set up before transfers. I rolled the transfer last week because I wanted two for this huge double game week. It was a poor score and a huge nine point swing because of Melier's own goal in that first game for Leeds. That keeper was a big differential for me as well, so it could have been huge. I didn't start Calvert-Lewin ahead of Robertson, which was a tight call and I lost three points there, but no regrets there. A uh, valuable lesson learned though, to play the in-form attacker rather than a defender from an out-of-form team, especially in a derby. I'm most likely going to use the bench boost this game week 26, unless there are injuries on my players. I think it's important to try and field 15 players on your bench boost, and as you can see, Grealish is an injury doubt, so he might go. Aston Villas Davis is on my bench, who isn't going to get me any points on a bench boost, so upgrading him is a no-brainer. I had this decision of Kane versus Watkins in my first scouting for goals episode in game week 20 and went for Kane who got injured. Back then Kane had underlying stats that were better than Watkins, but Watkins had great stats as well, so it will be interesting to see the stats on them this time. But I think Watkins suits my team structure better. However, Kane is something I, someone I really want and I have to sacrifice Sala this week to get Kane in. And the cheap midfielder I would want in that case is probably Rafinha. So I think the most obvious options that I can think of are one of these moves. Salah plus Davis to Kane and Rafinha or Davis plus Robertson to Watkins and Dyer. Let's make a comparison by creating two different teams in the build my team tool and compare them. And I will sort a game week range of 26 to 29 since I plan to wildcard in 30. I only have four players who can play for me in game week 29 at the moment. So my goal is to field around nine players by using all of my free transfers to focus on that game week. Current team without making any transfers is projected to score 260.5 points. By switching from Salah and Davis to Kane and Rafinha, this score would go up by 5 points. The other move I was talking about was Watkins and Dyer, which is projected to score 6 more points than the original. But it's important to note that the projection tool doesn't know that I plan to bench boost in game week 26, which is a big part of why I make these moves, so we need to consider the bench points as well. The first team will score on average 16.5 points, while the second team will score on average 17 bench points. So basically the same result for both teams. And I'll be quite happy if my bench boost scores me 17 points extra. If we look at Salah versus Kane, then Salah is projected to outscore Kane in every game week up until 29, so it seems wise to wait with that move. I also have Spurs coverage in 26 already with Son, and we all know how often they link up for a goal. If we sort by highest projected score in 29, we can see Aubameyang is there, so we could treat him almost as a free hit player who we want for one week and it would be easy to downgrade Bruno to get him. But that clashes a bit with my Salah to Kane planned move in game week 29, which needs to be a double move since they have different positions, so this means I'll need to take a hit that week with this plan. But maybe that's fine. Anyway, that's how I like to think about these kinds of moves and how I like to plan. If I can avoid a hit, that would be better. If we take a look at the comparison tool between Salah and Kane, last four game weeks we can see that Salah edges him in the most important metrics. But he has had one penalty more, so let's not forget that. But still, better expected goals as well as assists in open play. Kane has had more shots, but Salah has four big chances in open play versus Kane's two. So quite equal, and we should take a look at the fixture ticker for Liverpool and Spurs. And we can see that pool features, but Spurs is second if we sort to game week 29. Aston Villa is up there too, and we can look at Watkins' stats to compare with Kane to see how good value Watkins might be if he can match Kane's underlying stats, because we know by now that he matches his fixtures. And here we can see that the stats are quite close between these two. Watkins has slightly worse expected goal stats, Kane shoots more, and of course Kane is on penalties. I would love to own both, and Grealish potentially being out hurts Watkins a little bit in my opinion. Another thing to factor in is that I might captain Kane if I owned him. He is known as a double game week hero. One last thing I'll be looking at with you guys is the goals imminent table. And we can spot Kane here, who again has quite a low expected goals of 1.23 in his last four matches. It should be noted that one game was versus Liverpool, where he got injured at halftime. And he has also played Manchester City, 
who are the best defensive side in the world at the moment. There are two other guys on this table that I find encouraging to see here. The first one is Rafinha. Him and Loftus Cheek are perfect for my structure if I was to sell Mo Salah. This is, in my opinion, quite a tough decision, and I haven't gotten 100% clarity, but I'm leaning towards getting Watkins instead of Kane because I don't like the idea of selling Salah in a double game week, and I think Robbo is a higher priority to sell. If we look at one last table, Dusra's dodgy defenses, we can see that Liverpool has had four errors in their defense, which has led to a goal. It's mostly down to Alisson, who is behind this mess, but still proves signs of a team in disarray. Now let's go through your Twitter questions. Both Tomisapo and Kotokuda asks, which assets to own for the double game week and are there any must-haves? I think there are many great options but no standout captain and there's no great asset that has two easy fixtures in my opinion. Since you are asking about captaincy we can check the projection table and sort on game week 26 and we see that Salah at the top and then Bruno and Kane are all very close and it's extremely tough to call so don't overthink it and just go with the one you see has the highest upside for you because they are all equally likely to not blank. Bruno has the most double digit holes alongside with Son, so that's an argument for them having the highest upside. Apart from Manchester City, it seems to be Everton and Leicester. I'm probably getting Harvey Barnes myself to target the doubles if Grealish is unfit. Next question. Need some decision making help. I like Leicester and Everton fixtures. I have three options. A. KDB plus cheap defender in for Sterling plus Chaw. B. Barnes in for Sterling and a minus 4 to get Digne or City D in. C. Barnes and Son in for Rafinha and Sterling. Maybe minus 8 for a defender. As I just mentioned, I agree with you that I like Leicester and Everton's fixtures. And I think Sterling is due a rest maybe in one of those double game week games. I think getting KDB is a little bit sideways and he is not totally match fit. So I like B the most. I like getting Barnes in and another City Defender. That's all I had for you this game week. Thanks for your questions. And if you want your questions featured in the next episode of this video series, you need to follow me on Twitter so we can chat there. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. I'll be looking for you in the comments here on YouTube. So let me know if you have any further questions. And I look forward to seeing you there in the comments. And a massive good luck this game week, guys.